Hi guys, Hyperlative here, the Norwegian gamer, and this is a, another gameplay clip from Mass Effect 2. So, in this mission, I'm helping out Garrus, my friend from the first Mass Effect, uh, with some uh, loose ends. So, in the beginning of Mass Effect 2, your ship gets destroyed and you die, and you get revived by an organization called Cerberus. So now you're collecting a new team and you meet Garrus again. Well after you died, your old team uh, went on to do their own things and Garrus built a li little group for himself and took out crime lords and criminals uh, that kind of taking the law into his own hands and eradicating the galaxy of people he... that... of bad people, really. So... <coughs> His whole team gets killed, uh, and there's this one guy called Sidonis that actually betrayed him and lured him away, got the rest of the team killed, and then disappeared. So now we're on the search for Fade, a character that makes people disappear. And it turns out that Fade is Harkin, and Harkin was a CSEC officer in the first game. Uh, CSEC is the um, Citadel Security. So. Uh, so this time around he's not because he's actually been kicked out of CSEC. So what he is up to now is just making people disappear. Right here died because it was too aggro. Well, so uh, what Garrus want to do is take out Sidonis because he doesn't think it's fair for him to live after he took down his whole team. So that's basically what I'm doing right here. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Mass Effect 2, or we'll continue a little bit on what I said last time. Um, when I first started to play Mass Effect 2, I really didn't like the game. I thought the controls were clunky, uh, they hadn't done a proper job with the game, it really, really felt like a console port. I mean, it was, uh, it felt so, uh, it's so obvious that they didn't do a proper job making it for a for the PC, they just kind of slapped it together and made it work on the PC without really changing anything, which all isn't always the best thing to do. But after sticking with it, because I ha I've heard so much praise about Mass Effect 2, and that it's such a great game and yada yada yada, that I thought, well, I have to do this. I have to play this game because I loved the first one, but this one wasn't really doing it for me. But after I have I've played it for a while, I really gotta say I love it, and um, as you can see that was the, the bypass mini game where you bypass different locks and you'll have to do these bypasses. There's also the hacking mini game which you'll see later, and what you do, the, uh, what you do when you're hacking, you're probably going hacking into a terminal or something and you're picking out three different code blocks. You, you'll see it later. So right now I'm actually really loving the game, and uh, I'm really, I'm really, um, really happy about some some of the changes that they did to the game. So um, one thing that I really wanted to mention uh, is um, when we get out from this bypass, you s you'll see the red thing that hovers b uh, beside my weapon, and that is actually the incendiary ammo power that it's activated. The you got you, when you level up your character, you choose which powers you want to have. Uh, I play as an uh, assault, I believe, and then my uh, my powers are generally ammo powers. I can use all the different kinds of ammo. So right now I'm using the incendiary ammo, which actually isn't the best solution. Uh, the best ammo against the synthetics, these uh, droids, is actually um, I can't. It's some kind of shock ammo with electricity. I can't remember it now what's called in the game. So, um, yeah, here you can see the uh, hacking minigame where you choose the code blocks to uh, bypass the firewall. So, yeah, I, I gotta say, I, re I really love the game now. I I'm really on board with it. I still think that it's kind of a cheap uh, console port, but the game... I mean, I, I love the game, and they even managed to get rid of the awful... Uh, inventory system that they uh, had in the first game because the inventory in the first game was horrible to use it was really confusing and you 
didn't get a proper overview of what was happening. So they really got rid of it in that this game. Uh, you sometimes you'll find new weapons, but mostly you'll find um, uh, you'll find some uh, you'll investigate an object for say an L uh, SMG, this is the rocket, automated rock uh, rocket launcher. Uh, you'll find some SMG, you'll investigate it, and you'll be able to research into SMGs. Then you'll spend some um, minerals on research, and you'll you'll uh, you'll have upgraded the SMGs. They'll now do more power, for example. So you have to mine planets to get um, to get uh, minerals to use for upgrades. So right there, I just skipped a really uh, a really long. Um, Cutscene where I was just talking to Garrus about uh, about his team and how he got portrayed. Some more hacking for credits. <laughs> no, that was actually some research. So now I can do research on assault rifles and make them do more damage. Uh, a, a really funny thing uh, about this game is that. Sometimes it seems that it slows down time, not because I'm uh, I see it, but because the voices of different characters suddenly gets lower. Uh, it gets uh, get a more bass like tone, like you're you're slowing down time and you and people go like this. It sounds like that, and it's really strange because it doesn't feel like it slows down time, but it's like it slows down time on the audio for some reason. I don't know. It's just really strange. And it's really funny too because it doesn't matter that much when it's the guys talking because, you know, they got uh, uh, dark voices from before. But it's so strange when uh, when it happens to, to women because suddenly they get this darker voice and sounds quite manly at times and it's really strange. And thank God for the automated... Uh, or the uh, the rocket launcher automatic. So I'm guessing at some point I'm actually switching ammo type. Right there, I used Unity to get my uh, the Krogan that I have on my team back up. No, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I change. You can see that right there and. Now it becomes blue, so now it's the proper kind of ammo. Which is much more effective, as you can see, against the mechs and synthetics in general. So now I'm just searching for uh, more clips. And right here, we're just like, okay, these go up and down. No, they don't. <laughs> I'll just have to go over here. So here is actually some uh, some traversing of ter terrain. We didn't have that in the first game. There weren't many places you could actually vault and get up on on crates. So here's a real long cutscene. And when I see the cutscenes in um, Mass Effect, I really like to explore all my options when it comes to the dialogue wheel. So I <laughs> I I always investigate and I always go. Um, into detail uh, and ask about everything because I'm uh, I really like doing that so right here he's setting up a meet with uh, Sidonis the guy who betrayed Garrus so the plan is basically that um, I'll go distract the um, I'll go distract Sidonis while Garrus get a good shot and you'll see that coming up right here Load screen, we land, we have a, have a conversation about actually killing Sidonis. And I was kind of on the fence if I wanted to kill the guy or not, but I decided on letting Garrus kill him. As you can see on the left side of Garrus here, he has some um, synthetic there. Be that's because um, he got pretty bad hurt when I first met him in Mass Effect 2. So... Uh, he had to be patched up. So as you can see, I'm talking to him here. I have to move it to the side. 
tries to run away and it gets taken down. So that's it for the gameplay. And the mission summary is coming up real soon. Here we go. So um, that's it for now. I hope to see you next time. Snuckies.